hello again YouTube got another video here on uh, Dave's garage welcome along and thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and all that appreciate all the effort and help you guys put into it especially your comments and your questions it's all uh, interesting stuff and it all keeps the channel going along nicely so thank you very much so on this uh, episode we're going to make a gearbox mount for the engine and gearbox installation so up until now it's just been hanging on a weird thing a weird cradle thing i made to hold the gearbox in place and so it's time to get it to sit on its own support properly um, it was straightforward enough as it happens easier than i thought it was going to be uh, all made from six millimeter plate and just nuts and bolts and some bmw 3 series gearbox bobbins so you'll see how that comes out and uh, how it pans out i hope you enjoy the video First time you guys would have seen my pit. There's an engine down there. Took that out of my nephew's Corsa many moons ago, and it's still down there. That's got to be a good 20 years ago. One of the best things I did was build this pit. And it was a lot of work, a lot of digging, and a good couple of skipfuls of mud. But uh, you know, I have to make working on a car easier when it's not on our tissue anymore. So today's challenge is to make a mount from using this point here. Now, the Japanese have got a funny view of metric. So if you try to put an ordinary M10 bolt in here, it won't fit. So what you need, if you're going to do this, is an M10 by 1.25 thread, not the normal M10 by 1.5. This is a metric fine. So they're cheap enough to buy them. That's 8.8. Tensile strength, so that'll work well. As you can imagine, it's a bit tight for space down the pit and probably a bit echoey on the sound, but we'll do our best to try and get you in. I try my best to keep out of picture and show you what I'm trying to do here. So, the idea really is to have these two bobbins fit in right around here. We've got plenty of depth here because the gearbox hangs down way past here somewhere, so I've got a nice little space here where these two can go. Uh, I'm thinking just sort of back hit back this way a little bit and so it'll sit on there nicely so I'm really just going to rough at this to work it out so we're looking sort of roughly hold it in place where I want it which is about there measure it up and see what we got which is uh, about 40 mil forward of those so do the same that side Hopefully not getting in your way. We're looking about the same. So 40 mil forward and approximately 50 mil to the side. 50 and 40 brings us quite nicely. So I shall, knowing that measurements now, is 40 mil this way and 50 mil either side from those holes. We can now rough up something on the bench. Right, so first thing I've done is made a template for to drill me two holes in that side of the plate if you like because uh, I just found this works like I did with the engine mounts I said I'm always trying to make tap dies and and screw converters and what have you but this just works it's just a couple of bits of scrap I'm never going to use again and happy days. Right, so if we uh, get a rough idea where we want to go with this so you want is my detailed drawing yeah so 50 mil away from the center of these bring us around here somewhere so we can work with Sort of size piece and you're looking somewhere around there for the central ish I'm not uh, worried about being super accurate with this at this stage just roughing it out As it happens, they're about 40 mil 
apart there. So we want our holes up here somewhere. about 55 and 40 40 down from those it's there <laughs> well, that works out quite nicely if you can just run the rule across the bottom there then Right, so yeah, we can work with that. So I was to clamp that onto there now, and use that as my guide to get my drill bit square, and then just drill through it. These two I can do. I can punch, and they don't have to be as accurate as these two. But these, this is why I do this, so I can get these accurate, so it will bolt up to the box nicely. Now you're probably thinking this is a terrible idea. And it probably is, but it works for me, so... If it works, it ain't stupid. Is my motto. See, that will act as a guide now for my drill bit. And that's all I want to do is divot it. <sighs> Lovely. And these I can, if I will be here because I'm on a bit of a wobble on my bench, but I can centre punch those and drill those out. Right, so I think the next thing I'm going to need to do is to Run my plasma cutter up there and cut that off. I just realised there's a flaw in my plan here and I noticed it as I was drilling it out. That's not going to fully support that bushing. So that needs to really be the same width as that all the way around there. But what we can do, because we're this far into it, is use this, bolt this onto the car just to give us an idea whether this is going to work or not.
Okay, the answer to that is yes, it will work. So that's kind of the idea of that. So the gearbox, once there's a cradle across sort of here, the gearbox will then sit on that. And that's going to be a fairly simple bit of six mil plate again across there. It's not uh, not particularly rocket science, it'll sort of lay flat. Find somewhere if it'll lay flat along there, pick up this and lay flat again along there. And it'll just be a case of bolt it through the floors and sandwich it either side of the floor. That's a nice snug fit there now between those bolts. But I haven't had to open those up at all. That's uh, gone in there lovely. Okie dokie, as I was walking back to the bench, I had a brainwave. So these have got a little locating bib nib on them, which I could bring these in a little bit. So drill a new hole there, the same distance away as that is from that. So that will be my locator for this, same that side. And then uh, these just be in just a little bit. That means I don't waste that bit of steel there. And the work has gone into that already, so that's good news. The lesson of trial and error has worked. So I started off drill the hole directly across. Then of course you're in the same problem with it overhanging. So welded that up and drill it an angle. And now we can fully support our bush on both sides. And there's a nice little locator there for it as well. So I shall bolt this up to the gearbox and show you what I'm after. I, yeah, I think before I do that, I might just tidy these edges up here so it looks a bit cleaner and sits on the gearbox a bit nicer. Something along these sort of lines, so sort of go around there, nice and smooth, around there, round and up again and just sort of smooth off the areas. There we go, very, very roughly cut out, just freehand with a plasma cutter. So you can clean that up with a flap disc to get that to look pretty at a later date. And on the box you get the idea of what we're aiming at hopefully now. So once there's a cradle underneath here, the, the gearbox will sit on that rather than hang off these. I've been prevaricating about this for quite a while. And I mean quite a while, I mean about an hour, just wondering what to do. So my first intention was to come across sort of here, making the most of this strengthening plate around here. But if I do that, I even put a little hole there just exploratory to see where I'm going with it. But if I do that, the whole thing is going to be putting the weight on here and sort of pivoting it downwards here, I think. I don't think that's going to work. Um, not particularly well any anyway. And on the inside, that way that comes out is, is on a slant, so it'd be, it's going to be awkward to sort that out. So what I have come I have noticed though, is just here, we've got a gap here and here, where are we here, here, which is nice and flat. And when I put the gearbox tunnel in, these are overlapped by about an inch either side. So that gives me a nice strong flange there, which I drill through there and through there somewhere. And then I can make a plate to come across there and pick up those. That way is hardly any pivot in it. And there's a nice strong area there and there for it to bolt up to. And I can reinforce it from the other side with a, with a sort of manufactured flange or washer arrangement. So I think that's going to be the way forward. So the first thing I'm going to do, drill a hole through either side and see where we're at. Right, that's worked out fairly well. So there's my two holes there and there. All I need to do now is make a plate, hold the camera steady here, I'll make a plate from there across which will then incorporate to pick up for there. All right, this is where we're up against so far. So I've cut out a bit of steel, it's oblong rough, oblong shape, and drilled it so this will fit into there like so. Uh, we'll bolt this up to the gearbox now and see, it just gives us an idea of where we're going. And it looks a bit stupid at the moment, but this is kind of the idea. Now, as it happens, well, by chance and judgment, this is, I do think I was, I was going to have to sort of put bends on this to get it to, to, to run where we wanted it, but it's actually running fairly flat against the floor. So that's a, that's a happy coincidence. And I like those. So the next thing I'll do is mark through from above 
where my holes are going to be and mark underneath here where to trim this to avoid these floor things and sort of round off these corners and stuff and also to bring this sort of like this a little bit just to take a bit of weight out of it not too much, I don't know if it weaken it but I, I don't need it to be a big slab like that you can see in there, I just want to drill a bit gently into there to make a mark on it same on this side so we've got a mark there and there that we can work with right so that's those holes drilled out now so what I've done where they have my original mark I took an average between the two and found a so that the, the holes are both in the same place so that's that's now perfectly symmetrical bolt this back on the car then drill up from underneath into the floor pan so I can then get the bolt the bolt holes on the floor pan the same as these they're, they're fairly close only within a couple of mil of each other just so everything lines up nice and symmetrical right so there we have the basic support plate now of course we've got to make this a bit prettier than this and we've got these to avoid so sort of draw around these sort of let me get back here draw around these so sort of round that off same here round that off and so sort of do something to tidy this up but it don't take too much out of it because you need a certain amount of this you don't want to take pivoting so if you look at it down there there's a lot less pivot now between there and there uh, so that's going to be okay I think uh, the only uh, the only real way to prove it is eventually use it and if it starts to split or break or bend then we'll worry about that later down the line and I must apologize for the lack of filming in here it's, it's pretty difficult down here to get space so <laughs> it's uh, kind of best of what we can do so found here somewhere to about there maybe to bend that off is a basic idea And then something along this sort of lines is a basic idea. We could even put speed holes in it there and there. Right, so this is the sort of design I've come up with. Unfortunately, I got my head in the way of most of my drawing it out, so apologise for that. So, so around there, cut around there, speed hole there, and away to go. And that should look half about then. Like I said, if it's not strong enough, which I think it will be, it's a fair piece of steel. I can always strengthen it in the future. But uh, and that's a, and that's how it goes with working stuff out. You build it. If it's great, good. If it needs strengthening, then strengthen it later down the line. Right, there we go, so it's a bit rough and ready at the moment, but this will clean up nicely enough that all this joss here just taps off quite easily with a hammer and the edges, I'll soon get a flap disc on them and clean those up, tidy those out. So don't worry about how rough it looks, just roughing the shape out for the moment.
Lovely. Speed holes. Right, I'm going to countersink these as well. So what I want to do next is weld a bolt through these in the right direction. Yeah, that way. So that uh, I can off this up from underneath them and then just bolt through from the top. So countersink there. Lovely. And that's why I ground that drill to that funny shape. But you know, still drill holes. This is the idea for the bolt, although this is a stainless, I'll have to get some, some, some steel, ordinary steel ones. Focus. So that'll fit through there and I'll just spot weld those in place. So that'll make it easier for bolting into place in the car, otherwise you need two people to bolt it into place. But we're getting there, so the next challenge, get rid of that. Next challenge is to tidy this all up with a flap disc. Right, that's starting to look a little prettier. And then go get the other piece off the car and do the same to that. And then we can uh, bolt them up to see what they look like. Right, that's that one ground up. It ended up a little bit flatter on here than I wanted. I must have cut it back a bit too far, but it's, it's, it's fine. Let's do the same job. And it's not going to be visioned again. So that'll be fine. So we'll bolt this up to the car now and see what it's looking like. Right. That looks like a thing. I think we can work with that. All I need now is some, over for the top there, some washers to spread the load on the other side. Some nice big washers and that'll do that nicely. So what I'm gonna do now is just let the gearbox off of its temporary clamp up the top and see how it sits. Well, that's that clamp removed or, uh, or temporary support. And there's some big washers there and these in fact are just off cuts from when the cut circle out previously on some two mil plate this is heavy this is the strong stuff as well um like a reinforced steel or a tough steel so that would be perfect for for spreading the load there like i said i can keep an eye on that if it starts to crack then we'll do something about it but i think it'll be all right so that's it sitting nicely on the top there and let's have a look see what it looks like underneath and yeah, underneath that's nice and secure there that's uh, sitting on those rubbers nicely and a good contact patch there to give it some uh, something to hang on to so I'm quite happy with that it was a little simpler than I expected it to be if I'm honest it, it's got gone nice and flat across there so that's a that is a bonus Right then, so you can see I've decided to machine up a couple of bolts instead of waiting for countersunks to come in the post. 
goes like this way and just crack on with it and I've machined a chamfer on the top as well so once that goes into there fill that with a weld that'd be nice nice and strong same there so bolt these up underneath keep them dead square and weld those in place lovely jobs are good on there you go so that's them welded into there and that's what I meant by bolting them in so they're nice and dead square as you weld them up so take that apart now and give this a coat of paint there we go a bit of paint a little bit of hardware and suddenly it looks a little bit prettier clean that off so that's uh, come out all right that is let's bolt it up to the car and see what we end up with yeah i think that looks all right happy days lovely That's all dandy in there. I tried hanging off the bracket underneath and it carried my weight, so I think it'll be fine. Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it's, um, like I said at the, at the intro, it's, it turned out to be a little bit easier than I expected it to be, which is always good news. When I did the same gearbox mount for the pop, I ended up having to build a cradle where it came down and across and it became quite convoluted. So I, I learned a fair bit from that effort, which I applied to the, this effort so it's always nice when things go a bit better than expected um, if anybody watching is concerned that it's not gonna be strong enough or where it bolts into the floor it's not gonna be good enough well we'll watch the space to see how that pans out I think it's gonna be okay it's a fair contact patch with the floor and a reasonable size wash on the top to spread the load if anything maybe that needs to be a little bit larger or perhaps a bit longer maybe a bit non blog shape to spread it around but we'll watch your space and see what happens with that there's not a massive load on there um the the twist the, of the torque the engine in box is well spread out now so that's that's well the, the load of that is spread nicely um and the weight of the box at that point isn't that much no the, the, the engine mounts are taking the bulk of the weight and the engine because the way where they are uh so i'm not overly worried that's going to be a problem but we'll see how it gets on once we get the car on the road and uh, give it a good testing and see what happens thanks again for watching and see you in the next one